What's up guys, Head has released their new line of paddles for 2023 for the Gravity and Tour line. With the excitement that the Head Radical Tour generated last year, I was excited to dive into the other lines and see how they performed since they're now sharing similar technology from the Radical Tour Co. Unfortunately, it didn't really come out how I hoped. The Head Extreme Tour Max is $149.95 and they have three versions of the paddle. The only difference is weight. The Tour Light is 7.2 ounces, the Tour is 7.6, and finally the Tour Max is 8.1 ounces. They're all 11 millimeter thick, polymer core with foam, graphite surface, standard shape, 5 inch octagon handle, grip sizes of 4 and 1 8 inches, and 3 and 7 8 inches. They've also added their spin on texture to the Tour Max, which was introduced with the Radical Tour line last year to help generate a lot of spin. Finally, they've also added what they are calling foamed core, and when talking to Head, they placed foam at the outer edges of the paddle at 3 and 9 o'clock, and I do wonder why they opted to do it this way rather than around the entire perimeter like everyone else, but that's how they decided to do it. Now, before we dive into the rest of the video, I need to talk about Head's marketing because it's really bad and needs to be revamped. First, the Head Extreme Tour is marketed as having ultimate control and touch, but the paddle's 11 millimeter thick, which is the complete opposite of every other company's marketing in pickleball. Similarly, if you look at the Head Radical Tour Co., it's a 15 millimeter paddle marketed as a power paddle. I don't understand why Head is opting to do everything backwards. Not only that, but the naming scheme year to year could be more helpful and clearer to the consumer. They use the same name every year and they don't add a year marker to the paddle to denote which one you're buying. Several of you told me last year that you bought the wrong Head Radical Tour Co. because you weren't aware that they had several models with the same name. If you go to an online retailer like Just Paddles, you'll see the Head Extreme Tour for $89.95 and you can also find the latest one for $149.95. But there's nothing to tell you why one is more expensive or that one is newer than the other one. You're just left to make an assumption based on the price. All naming schemes and marketing need to be completely reworked from these paddles because even as someone who follows the paddle market very closely, it gets confusing to look at their lineup and break it down. Now, I wasn't sure I would talk about this paddle, but when I ran a spin test, the result came back as 2,070 RPM. This was so high that I went back and tested it a second day and got 2,018 RPM. So clearly it wasn't a fluke. This caught my attention and I felt I needed to play with the paddle more to see if it was worth your money. The spin potential was most noticeable on serves and drives and it seemed like it was dipping very aggressively. Here's the catch though. A few paddles recently were hitting some higher numbers than I'm used to seeing, so I retested some old paddles to see how they would compare today. The Head Radical Tour Co. achieved 2104 RPM versus 1568 RPM when originally tested. The Selkirk Labs Project 003 achieved 2126 versus 1800, and the Selkirk Vanguard 2.0 was completely unchanged at 1146 versus 1148 RPM. So something must have become better in my mechanics about generating topspin on serves recently, so I may need to go back and test some older paddles to benchmark results and kind of compare and figure out what the percentage increase and yada yada yada, a bunch of stuff that you guys probably don't care about, but just know that the spin is definitely good on the Extreme Tour Max, but it seems like other paddles that were also good before are probably going to hit the same number if I retest them. Since this is marketed as a control paddle, let's discuss that first. As I said before, I'm already confused why it's marketed as a control paddle when it's 11 millimeter thick. After playing with it for three sessions, I'm even more confused. When I think of a control paddle, I think of the Selkirk Vanguard 2.0, Electrum Model E, Ronbis R1.16, Yola Radius, and so on. The Extreme Tour Max is nothing like those paddles. It has a relatively stiff base, which isn't usually a characteristic of a control paddle. I wouldn't say I had a hard time controlling the paddle, but it wasn't as easy as any of the paddles I mentioned. The main area I noticed downfalls were resets anywhere on the court. It has more pop than I expected, making it just a little harder to get the ball down. To be honest, I'm sure if I played more sessions with it, I would be able to adjust. I wouldn't call it an extremely poppy paddle. Now, despite not feeling like a control paddle, I wouldn't classify it as a power paddle either. 
It has some okay finishing power, but nothing stands out. With the paddle being so thin and having a slightly stiffer face, I expect there to be more power than there is. It was most obvious in hands battles and singles when driving the ball for passing shots. I just couldn't penetrate the way I wanted it to. Because of this, the paddle is put into a confusing place for me. It's thin and stiff, but could have better power. It's marketed as a control paddle, but it also doesn't have exceptional control either. At best, I think this is an all-court paddle. When I started comparing it to the Radical Tour Co, I first noticed that the swing weight was considerably lower on the Tour Max. There's less mass in the head, making it harder to plow through the ball. I think head is partially referring to this paddle as a control paddle because it's so head light. With a swing weight of 97, that's very low and probably puts it in the top five or top 10 lowest paddles for swing weight that I've personally tested. I suppose the bright side is that because the swing weight is so low, your hands are going to be very fast at the net. I imagine if you opted for the light version at 7.2 ounces, the swing weight would be even lower. So if hand speed is important to you, I do think that would actually be a pro of this paddle. The final nail in the coffin is the sweet spot. In my opinion, it's below average and only feels great if you nail it right in the center of the paddle. So on top of not doing power or control particularly well, now you have a mediocre sweet spot that makes doing any of those shots even more difficult. Didn't hit a drive in the sweet spot? Severe lack of power. Don't hit a reset in the center? The ball's dead. Now, don't get me wrong, if you hit on any paddle off center, it's not going to be a great shot, but a lot of these newer paddles have plenty of energy to at least give you a decent shot, even if you don't nail the center. On this paddle, I felt like it was very obvious when I missed. I'm bummed to see the Extreme Tour Max play so mediocre. The biggest phrase I kept returning to while trying the paddle was that it felt cheap. Not because of the construction of it, but every time I hit the ball, it reminded me of cheaper feeling paddles. There was no satisfying feel to it. With how much I enjoyed the Head Radical Tour Co. last year, I thought this might be an exciting paddle, but it just isn't. Normally when I review a paddle, even if I don't like it, I can explain who the paddle is for, but with the Extreme Tour Max, I don't know who I would tell to buy this paddle. The only defining feature it has is solid spin and a low swing weight. After that, it doesn't have that much going for it. For the same price, you could purchase a Head Radical Tour Co., a Vatic Pro, a Legacy Pro, or if you wanted to go even cheaper, a Rhombus R1.16 and a slew of other raw carbon fiber paddles that probably do control better than this one. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to say pass on the Head Extreme Tour Max. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to click like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.